the white cliffs that to any traveller betoken England. We're saying goodbye to them on the latest car ferry, which has knocked long kilometres off that journey to the sun, which used to start in northern France. Now, with the New Haven Dieppe route, which British Railways have contrived, you're the best part of a day nearer Paris and the Riviera than you were with the northern ferries. So what do you do? Press on? Or stay the extra time to discover the Norman charms of an old world port which somehow escaped all the wartime destruction which might have made it concrete and new. Dieppe, and it's geared itself into a resort where Parisians are apt to spend their weekends. So why shouldn't we linger a little to see how, once a week, it closes its main streets to motor cars and becomes the most colourful of markets that exist in France. Here, they know how to change the rhythm of living. Because this is the Normandy farmland where the one-day market, even if it rains, and the touring circus are the catch crops they so often reap in the field of fun. Just watch this fun build up. So this is what happens when the circus comes to town. And this is the weekly market in the making. The event that brings people in from miles around and transforms La Grande Rue, the Dieppe High Street, into an outdoor fair of unique proportions. Side by side in the early morning, the two superimposed attractions begin to unroll and build up. We tend to see show folk in the sawdust ring. Here, whoever they are, they join in the work and quickly turn it into fun. There's no Boy Scouts tent pole they're getting ready to put up, and that's flat. There's more than a million pounds worth of capital sunk in the vehicles alone that keep bringing this circus here to Dieppe, where they lap it up with regularity. But it's still a manual operation getting the whole thing going. It's a tented city they're assembling, as colourful as any Arab cap. They never had this much canvas to handle on the old clipper ships. No armada made a braver show on a wet Saturday with such variety. The shopkeepers of Dieppe have become backroom boys to the peasant stallholders who brought all the wealth of the countryside to this quaint curbside market, now in full cry. In two hours' time, 10,000 cabbages will have been popped into shopping bags. Chicks and trinkets, marrows and merchandise of a range and bulk so vast it's flabbergasting will have been sold and bought and taken home. This market is as magical as the circus itself. It won't be long now before the lights glitter and the big top is filled with colour and the self-same crowds that jam-pack the market streets. A wash and brush up for the circus star motorcyclist watched by Pepe the Chip. Now for a preview of the famous Dancing Tiger. Now for a preview of tomorrow's lunch. Cabbages, lovely cabbages. Cauliflowers, oui madame, c'est bon. But it's nearly over now. The stallholders are packing up and preparing for a coup de rouge and a game of dominoes. The crowds are thinning out and it'll be a week before country life and this rich bit of yesterday enliven Dieppe's picturesque old streets once more. War scars along this coast have so often replaced character with concrete. Dieppe has largely, but not entirely, escaped and some of its concrete has a splendour and a seaport flavour that watermarks the port. It's the same at nearby saint valery where the whole place was blitzed. A modern fisherman's church has brought a bewitching seascape beauty to the new township. A 
From here, Rip Van Winkle could do a reverse journey to times gone by and the curiosity of the old church at Alouville Bellefosse. The old church here is a church that was built in the folds and creases of an ancient oak tree in the churchyard. A pixie house church that, to children, is a miracle out of a fairy tale. Here are two little magical chapels where, the villagers say, you can feel alone with your creator. Just drive along this Normandy coast and discover its sea sculptured fascination. White cliffs of Dover, we say, and here across the channel, the cliffs are the same, just carved with that much extra artistry. As the sea lashes the soft cliffs into solution, the flintstones between the chalk layers get stranded on the beach. And here you see the flintstone industry, perhaps the most primitive of the manual activities that still persist in this 20th century world. They grade these flints for size to act as grinders in a whole host of precision industries. They must ensure that every flint pebble is unflawed and uncracked. Some of them, ground, go as an essential constituent into Wedgwood pottery and other fine ceramics. So there's civilized sense in having mules and horses living their working lives out here on the Normandy beach. Some of these flint workers live in caves in the white cliffs of Normandy, which, when you see them, are just a continuation of our own white English cliffs, interrupted by some geological accident. Now, who in his right mind would regard Dieppe as just a railway terminus, or the place you roar away from over the new Tankerville Bridge, the biggest suspension bridge on the continent? Next time, you'll stay here for the sunset.